here with you too. This is my ground and my ground team. And uh, I want to talk about some of the cars I've owned. And I've already told you about my first car. And then I have about, oh, 17 or so. And I had a buddy who had a grandpa who had a couple cars and his old barn he wanted to get rid of. Well, when I asked Ronnie what they were, he said he didn't know. Grandpa told me, bring my dad down, check him out. Well, I went down, me and dad. We were down there checking him out. Grandpa come out and talk to us. I was like, wow, I said, well, those are decent looking cars. He said, yeah, he said, bought both of them. He said, I bought me the two door, and he said, I bought my wife the four door. I was like, well, I said, what are you going to have? He said, if you can get them out of here today, he said, you can have them for $50 a piece. I was like, done did. One was a 425 67 down to 88 four door. The other one is a 67 Dowdy A88 two-door with a 455 big block. I bought both cars for $50. Well, took them home and uh, if I had to get a record so I come down. My dad paid for it. He gave uh, $50 to have both of them turned to the house. And, yeah, that's for good money. Yeah, I was roughly around 90. Anyway, got in the house. Got clean chicken poop and stuff off the oven. Both of snow, or that uh, refrigerator snow white crap. That, uh, Olds and Chevrolet and all put on those cars that was there. And both had the blue interior. Now, both were pretty faded and tears but uh, well, we cleaned them up my dad helped me clean them up we uh, changed all the fluid cleaned them up you know just went through them a little bit bought new spark plugs spark plug wires and checked the coils and all that and they still had the coil so yeah that was really surprising anyway we got the uh, Got that, those cars to the house and got them cleaned up a little bit and got some gas in them. And they both started right up. What did Dad do? We had to put the battery charger on. Put the battery charger on both cars and both batteries come to life. And uh, we got to playing around me and Dad one day. I said, Dad, I wonder if this 455 is fat. Well, what we did? We took that 455 two door out and we ran the dog crap out of it. She would fly. Well, Dad says that motor's too fast for you. He said, when you're when you turn 18 and get your license, you drive that four door. He said, you live this two door alone. Said, okay. Got my license. We went out. I said. Dad, I said, grab that two door and come on out. And I said, there's a back road over here. Nobody ever comes up now. I said, let's see what these cars do. We go back there. We wind them up. Believe it or not, that four door could kick that two door's butt every time. Seriously, every time. Both of them had uh, no exhaust. Both of them had two barrels. And both were big bucks. One's 425, one 455. That 425 four door would kill that two door every round. 
looked at him like, ah, oh, he said, that ain't right. He said, this car ought to be faster than that. So what did we do? We swapped. I thought he was just sandbagging, playing like that other car was slow. That 455 was slow and dog turd. It was slow, I mean, slow, slow. That full door would seriously kick its butt every time. Even if you got to jump off the line with the, the two doors, the 455, or the 425, would roar and go past the other one every time. Well, Dad got along. We need some cash. Things got tight. What did we do? Well, we sold that uh, two door. And uh, that was fine to me. Hell, Dad sold it. I think we got like $800 for it. So, and that was enough to take care of bills and stuff for a while. Then my mom and dad sold it. Yeah, we didn't have nothing. So anyway, I was driving that other car around for a bit. And what do I find? I found a 75 Nova, Chevy Nova, that I like. It had Trans Am, Trans -Am rims on it. it had uh, the wavy, the... Like smoking the bandit. Like that, that Trans Am's got on. That's what it had on it. At 14 eighths, or 14 sevens, or eights in the front, and at 15 eighths in the back. Yeah, had air shocks on it. It, it looked mean. Motor was pretty well junked though, but. So, I started driving it all the time. And I decided, well, I'm gonna go get rid of that. Four, four, 425 so what that do guy coming up and he said I'll give you five hundred dollars and he said you can come to my junkyard he said I got some uh, Novas over there you can come over and scrounge some parts and stuff whatever you need he said if you need a home motor we'll just go ahead and do that and buy it back well that's what we did he took 425 and uh, his uh, grandson was going to take it out and put the street drive. Well, he took it out. The chain always broke. Him. He was under and killed him. So, uh, that car didn't get anything to crush. And uh, I understand. That's, you know, if that happened to my son or grandson, I'd probably do the same thing. That was sad to see that car go. But, you know, I got what I wanted. They had that Nova, and they had uh, somebody rebuilt the motor on it. Whatever, something happened, and the uh, connecting rod to the side of the block. It don't happen very often, but it happened. It's, it's just right down the side of the block and pushed out right above the oil pan. What did I do? I took all the chrome off the top of that motor, all off the, the timing cover and all. And I polished it all up good. I took that intake off that and checked it and made sure. And I put a four barrel on my Nova. Put the intake, because the intake just happened to be an elder barrel. And it was a uh, dual plane, like something like what you put in four wheel drive. You know, something about good RPM, low grind. Well, the car had some low grind off the line. And uh, I decided one day after I got all that like, chrome on the motor and cleaned it all up and stuff, I got the motor to run good. I decided. I was going to get up in there and I was going to do some body work on, on the rear quarters. Well, I got up in the back of the trunk. I took the deck lid off. It was up in there. had a wire brush grinder. Just grinding the crap out of the rust. Using a vacuum cleaner, sucking that all out. And I used the grinder and hit there with a brush on. 
And all of a sudden I seen this little piece of metal go flipping across. And I thought, what the heck? And I looked, and that was a body bolt. What body bolts to help that unit body and that rear end all together? All had rusted off. There was nothing left. And that that floor plan looked like Swiss cheese. And my dad talked me out of restoring it. Well, it went bye bye. I wish it wouldn't have, but it did. I got my rims and tires back. I got all the chrome off of it. Took the intake off and all that. And the guy at the junkyard still gave me $250 for the car. Mind you, I only get $200 for a brick out when I bought it. So, I was out motoring on. I started working with a guy and he had an old Chevy van. Uh, I don't know exactly what year. I think it was a 74 maybe, 75. It was black and green. It kind of looked like camo, but I don't know. He had the emergency brake modified, so all you had to do was pull it when you're moving. Cut the wheel real hard, grab it, and you would slide the rear end. Yeah, not a smart thing. But anyway, so I had it. Just had two front seats in it. Everything in the back was gutted out pretty well. And uh, we took some new channel. We had very well on dirt bikes. And we made so we could carry them around in the back of the van. Nobody can steal them. We can take them out and ride. Well, it had a uh, reverse shift pattern, four speed in it. It had been modified. All the linkage had been reversed. So instead of reverse, first, second, third, fourth, reverse, it was totally freaked up. And, uh, I don't know how many times I locked that thing between gears. Be driving and go to shift and lock it between gears. What did I get for it? I get $400 for it. The guy had previously built the motor that produced 650 horse. No lie. And it had. Uh, Posi rear end, had four new tires on it, had uh, Chevy Rally wheels on it, and they were a small lug pattern. How in the world do you get a small lug on a truck like that? Somebody went and swapped the axles and all and put a car, a car rear end under that van and modified and put knuckles out on the front and the van already had a little bit of an attitude down in the nose from the big V8 in when that was a uh, six cylinder van that swapped over so anyway I had that and I, I kept sticking between gears so I got the bright idea one day I was going to pull that motor and put it in another car. Well, in the process of pulling the motor, I found a 79 Forenza GT for how much? $175. And it run with battery. And he said, for $200, I want, you can have the radio. For uh, $175, you can have the car. I said, I just want a car. I said, I don't care about that radio. So I bought a Forenza GT, old Forenza GT, $175. I drove that thing like there wouldn't know tomorrow. You know, those are good days. And that's the car I found out. 
that had a uh, 69 Camaro 350 out of a factory I believe it was a 4 speed that was a bad motor. It was wicked. How do I know? I ran the crap out of that car. I beat anything and everything that I could find with that car. And, uh, well, one day I was coming home from school and he knew the body come apart. I drove the rest way to the house. I had to take and drill it and modify it and it worked for a while and then I got in a pickup phase and I had a 73 GMC and before it I had a 66 Chevy pickup 8 foot step side and I had a big window but I was told by the guy that I bought it off of he had checked the numbers at one time and that was supposed to have been made with a small window. But for some reason, it had the big window in it. And I don't know if it was made that way, if somebody modified it, made it that way, or what. But that, that truck was driven for several years until it was given up the ghost. And then I sold it to a guy $75. I mean, the rockers were almost completely gone. The fenders were gone. The hell, it, it had uh, plywood put in the bed a long time before I ever got it. I sold him $75. And I got my battery. And I took it $75 and I found a fella had a 73 GMC pick up for sale for a hundred and quarter and I bought it. I had a five gallon can of gas with me and a battery. The battery was from 66. Drove it. Loved that old truck. Bed got shakier and crap. And I took the bed off and I put uh, a wood bed on. Of course, I'd had some 33s on the back and 31s on the front. And I was always a big fan of four drives, but didn't have any for a while. So what did I do? I got rid of the van body. I kept the motor for a short time. I sold it for $200 and a set of four tires. I bought a, a Chevrolet eight, uh, 77. Chevy Blazer with a 400 cubic inch small box for four hundred dollars. I put them four new tires on there. They were dinky, but you know, got me from point A to point B for a while. And I bought a, a, a '84 Chevy S10 Love four cylinder. Had too much trouble with the four cylinder. I jerked it up. I put that motor that was in that Forenza GT motor and tranny into that S10. I had to have the drive shaft cut, and I had one mate cut the ends, and they built one that was I think six inches longer to her and twenty-five dollars at Napa, and it was balanced. I put her in there. I run the crap out of that S10. I drag raced everywhere. I had 84 Mercury Lynx wagon that I run the crap out of drag raced. That that uh, Mercury Lynx wagon was uh, the head was shaved 10,000, block was shaved 10,000, and it was bored 30 over. It was built that way when I got it. And it was fast. I would go street light to street like V8 and I'd eat them up. And uh, I had, oh my goodness, I've had so many. And I had, uh, after that, I had, well, I had the S10. I bought a Chevy Malibu, 79, 
That's one hundred dollars. Supposedly, the water or the oil pump is out of it, and the guy had run it forever without it, and it supposedly fried the motor, cooked it in the top end. I plugged it back in. The sensor had been unplugged. Plugged it back in. I drove it. I ran the crap out of it. I was getting ready to put a V8 in it when I got rid of it. The guy come around and he said, I'll give you $800 for just the body of that Malibu. I said, $800 and you keep that six cylinder. And he said, okay. And that was gone. Well, I traded, I, I get, pulled the motor out of that S10 after a while. And I was giving it to my little brother for an El Camino I bought it. And a boy that he run with come around and he won that S10 body because I'd had the only V8 in my area and an S10 that I would put in there. That was in 93 or 94 somewhere in there. He bought it. He gave me $200 cash, two three-wheelers. One was a 250R that was bored and stroked and the other one was a 200SX that was supposedly bored and stroked and uh, a whole bunch of other parts so I gave him the body I traded him I bought a 79 Chevy pickup and uh, I ran the crap out of it till yeah Training give up. It was going out when I bought it, but it wasn't that bad. I drove that thing for about three years before the training went out. I had to go out. I was drag racing. I was, was streetlight to streetlight. I loved it. What did I do? I took that four wheel drive blazer. The body got real bad that time, so I tore that body off. Me and my little brother, we cut it all up in small chunks. Put the bed of that 79. Put that 79 cab on that, and I had a buddy make me some hot pucks that were three inches tall, solid steel. And we put on top of them body mounts, and then we had to modify the back mount to fit into the back of the driver's or in the pickup cab chassis or in the cab to the chassis mount. I think we had to go the three inches plus another three inches, I think, or four inches, or something like that. I can't remember exactly. I went to a yard sale, and those motors on that blazer was already, that, those tires on that blazer were already jumped. So I went to a yard sale, and I saw some big tires that turned around at reason to stop. And I bought four 36 by 1450. 15s that were mounted on Chevy Turbo 2 rims, 6 lug, that bolted straight on to my blazer axles. Got lug nuts and all for $100. I put them on there and I run the crap out of it. I had to build a flatbed for it. We took the other flatbed and cut it down. That was on my 73 put on it. I sold the 73 to that guy and it was gone. And I got rid of the let's see, got rid of the Mercury Links, the both olds, the Chevy truck, the old Sprinza GT, the Nova the van. I can't remember how many, but anyway. So, I put that on. Or, together on that truck. And that was my play truck. I bought me an 86 three quarter ton K20. Four wheel drive, long bed. Yeah. 350 small block. I had these dinky ass 26 inch, 28 inch tires on it. Went and bought me a set of 31s. And I drove it like that until they went and they were gone. And then I went and bought a set of 33s. 
used to put on it. And uh, I run them for a long time. Bought them off a guy outside of Circle World. Rex. Good guy. I just wanted them for the rims. They were. Uh, I give eighty dollars, I think, for all four, and they were on white spoke rims that looked like they were brand new. And the tread on were eh, they weren't that bad. So I drove them that way for a long while. What the crap on them? And when they were done, I bought a set of thirty threes, put them on, and had to barely shave the rear corner of the front fenders. No lift. And uh, I've had a, a 97 Chevy S10 extended cab, four cylinder five speed. Just drive back full to work. Hit a deer and towed it. Actually, I hit two deers. One come up over the windshield and hit the tailgate, drove the tailgate clear out. And uh, the bolts or whatever in the steering column dropped, dropped the steering column, crossed my legs, and the airbag didn't even deploy. Uh, and I hit the right side of the ditch, hit the whole side, right side out of it. And uh, I had a 97 Chevy Silverado extended cab. Uh, it was a three door, if that's what you want to call it, two door extender with passenger side open. And that uh, short bed. And uh, it had 31s on it. It was on two wheel drive. And that was just a uh, lease vehicle. I, I leased it, I wanted to say if I kind of liked it. I didn't, but I did. And uh, leased it. And the time was up, I said I'd get rid of it. One to four wheel drive. I didn't do it. Because my job went south. So, and I just recently, like in the last two years since we moved, I sold my 86 Chevy K20. And that was the last of my babies. And uh, I had other cars in there and out there. I had derby cars that I didn't personally drive, but I had money and ties into. And uh, I had a little bit of tie into a race car. Um, didn't drive it, I wasn't into driving it. Dirt car. But, uh, he won two, uh, 2006 championship in uh, this area. That was my brother in law. As a bad car. But, uh, that, that's probably all the cars I personally have. Uh, right now in the driveway, I have a 65 Chevy Impala that is my wife's aunt's. I got a 74. Chevy pickup, it's got the big six in it, and that's actually a V6. I don't know who, I've never seen one like it. It doesn't look like a 4.3 liter, that's supposedly all factory. This three on the tree, and it's an eight foot step side. And then there's a gentleman Jim that's out there. It's an eight foot bed. It's got camper top on it. And I believe that's a 78. And then there's a 93 Chevrolet four wheel drive K20 with 32s. And that was my wife's uncle's truck. And uh, the gentleman Jim was her grandpa's. And her grandma's 84 Mercury, or Chevrolet Caprice, excuse me, not Mercury, Chevrolet Caprice. And then my wife's car, her 
09 Chevy Cavalera, Chevy uh, Avia, or Aveo. And currently I don't have one. Uh, I'm looking uh, until all the, the family stuff taken care of. I can't really put any money into them out here or not. I'd love to, especially at 65 and the 93. If I really had the time of the month, I'd like to take the body off the 93. Put the Gentleman Jim body onto that. The body's awesome on it, and it's starting to get a little rusty in there, but for the most part, it is back. But, uh, as soon as the uh, family stuff all comes up, gets taken care of, we'll see about maybe working on some other. And then, he said we'll talk about other vehicles. We've got a 1966 Ridgeline, 12 foot deep V John Bone, with a 8 horsepower Johnson. And I've, that's a 94 model, I do believe. And then that's got a 1950s, early 60s uh, trolling motor that I found. Uh, it's all chrome, and I put on there. And uh, I put a trolling motor that was from the late 70s, early 80s. On there. And that's a uh, pretty good condition. I uh, made a brother-in-law paint on going to use it for fishing sometime. And just things going bad here. I'm trying to keep the head above water and all that. And then uh, there's tractors. My uncle's tractors are out there. Or my wife's uncle's. My grandpa's tractors. There, there's a late 50s, early 60s. Air National Cub Low Boy that we use to mow with. It's got the woods mower. And then there's a. Oh, I don't want to say. I'd say it's probably late 40s. And that's a uh, Air National Inn. And then there's one sitting out in the field. That's a. It's a parts tractor now. One time it was decent, but that's hard to track. And then there's all kinds of farm equipment out under there, out there at the edge of the back field. Stuff, stuff that they've used and decided not to use anymore. And uh, there's all kinds of old mowers. There's probably 20, 30 old mowers out there in spots. But, uh, so, that, that's my video. Uh, my head hurts right now. I, I'm still trying to think. I've owned other cars, but I've just never had them all in my name. There's been probably 30 or 40 cars that I've had, just had, for a day or two going somewhere else or whatever or I bought them just for a few parts here and there so and they've come and gone uh, motorcycles I had a Kawasaki GSR I didn't like what I wrote down I had a 70 78 I think CBR 78, 7, that's a 750 CBR is what it was, yellow and white color, Honda, I bought it cheap, I mean cheap, I bought it for $100, run the crap out of it when I was a kid, didn't have a license or anything, had it. And uh, I was out riding one day and I pulled up to a gas station. And I was getting ready to fill the tank and the guy said, 
man, he goes, it's my bed looking for you, man. He said, you wouldn't want to sell it, would you? And I said, no, I don't think so. He said, I'll give you what's in my pocket right now. And I said, you probably ain't got a couple hundred dollars. He pulled eight, out $800, and I said, it's yours. I called my buddy up and said, hey, come get me. But uh, there's been a lot of bikes like that. A lot of stuff that I've never had a true title just to build. Uh, a buyer bill of sale and stuff. You know, there's been all kinds of crap. But uh, this video's been 35, almost 36 minutes long, so I'm going to get off here. I appreciate it. If you've been watching this, Thank you. You have a good day, and uh, we'll catch you out there somewhere. Bye.